So Nashville um, in middle Tennessee really um, was elected in Kentucky uh, of the United States. Bellmead uh, Plantation had 5,300 acres uh, at the height of its plantation. Early before the Civil War, um, we were the prominent uh, area for the breeding of thoroughbreds, um, which burst in the flat um, in the United States. Um, Lexington had really not come on board. Um, here in, in Nashville, Bell Mead Plantation was a major stud farm and produced uh, major, major uh, racehorses and then some studs that went on. The breeding lines have come down to uh, some pretty famous horses today. Um, we had the Civil War, um, which obviously things got shut down, and then after the Civil War, um, for a period of time towards the end of, of the century, uh, the uh, continued to be the center of breeding for the United States. But in the very, very early 1900s, um, Tennessee passed a law outlawed racing in Tennessee. And that just, that was the end of, of us as a major uh, breeding area and racing area. After that, um, basically the breeding industry migrated to Lexington, Kentucky. Um, and that pretty much ended our breeding for thoroughbred racehorses. Uh, when horse racing became illegal in Tennessee, then Bellmead, around the turn of the 1900s, the beginning of the 1900s, began to sell land off. And the Warner Parks were donated to uh, Metro, or Nashville, the city of Nashville, by the Warners and by Luke Lee. Warner Parks now comprise 3,100 acres. Uh, it's one of the larger municipal parks. In the early 1930s, um, a group of sportsmen um, established a major national fox hunting area in, um, up in the Gallatin area at Grassland, uh, which was the Grassland Plantation. And for a couple of years, they had a major steeplechase race there. Um, they really mimicked uh, the Grand National. The course actually mimicked the Grand National in England. Um, and then the Depression came and shut that down. Um, so in the late 1930s, a uh, group of sportsmen here came up with the idea of establishing a race course here in Nashville. And one was subsequently developed at Percy Warner Park. And uh, that was kind of the forerunner uh, to the Iroquois steeplechase. The, uh, the race, uh, the course, uh, in the 30s, uh, John Sloan, uh, Mason Hoagland, and Marcellus Frost, if you can picture looking at the box from below, and on top of that hill, the three of them rode over the hill and looked and said this would be a gorgeous location for a steeplechase. So they went and asked Harry Berry, who was head of the WPA, if he could help them build a race course. And so the WPA was at that time trying to put people back to work because of the depression and so many people were out of work. So the WPA uh, agreed to build the race course and many of the stone walls and columns that you still see in the park are there. Uh, the uh, WPA uh, disbanded uh, in the late 30s and fortunately the course was completed the trophies are very valuable. They're fine silver trophies. They're presented to the winner, and when the winner leaves the race, he gives them back to the race committee. The race committee takes the trophies and stores them at Bellmead Plantation. They're in a case, and Bellmead Plantation uh, have quite a few tourists that come through each year, and they get to view these trophies that are presented at the Iroquois Steeplechase. The, uh, the stables at the park were originally built by the WPA and the reason that the stables were built was in order to stable the mules that were used in the construction of the race course as well as many improvements to the park itself. This bowl is very important. Uh, it was presented to my grandfather and mother. There was a race in 1941 at the Iroquois steeplechase. It was called the Truxton Purse and it, the race was so close that they weren't able to determine a winner. So the two owners decided that they would have a match race at George Schwab's farm in Brentwood, Tennessee. They had a match race. My grandfather's horse, favorite son, 
won the race. And this bow was presented to my mother and my grandfather for winning the race. The horses that run in the Iroquois steeplechase uh, are typically from all over the eastern United States. Steeplechasing really is a circuit that starts in the spring, uh, runs every weekend, sometimes two and three race meets in different cities throughout the spring, and then at the flat tracks in the summer, and then again at different places in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, North South Carolina in the fall. So it's all governed by the National Steeplechase Association, which is kind of the governing body that writes the condition for the race meets, supplies the officials, and uh, basically adjudicates uh, the racing, which has been in existence for well before even the Iroquois was started, and uh, still continues today.